Rhys Mogg. He of the, um, uh, of the mug. He of the mug uh, has got a new idea. And his idea is very simple. He believes that Nigel Farage, his buddy from GB News, should be made a Conservative candidate, and presumably Richard Tice should join him. And uh, this would move the Conservative Party before the election right over to the right, and he would, he would hope, would pick up all the reform votes. That's not enough. I, I, if you look at the recent uh, local elections, that is not enough to win against the Labour vote. I, I'm, I, he's right. It might well end up, it might well force the hung election that Rishi Sunak is hoping for. Uh, but um, uh, a hung parliament filled with, what, uh, hung individuals like uh, Michael Gove is not necessarily going to be able to negotiate a decent um, way forward. The Conservative Party is deeply unpopular. Are the Lib Dems going to sidle up to the Conservatives? Can you see the SNP um, nudging Michael Gove or Rishi Sunak and suggesting that they, that they would like to be a lesser partner in a deal? No. These parties are going to uh, jumble up together and sidle up to Keir Starmer. So even a hung parliament is not going to get the results that uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, uh, thinks that uh, uh, that they could possibly achieve. Uh, he's observing a new poll which has suggested that uh, should Farage return as a leader of reform, reform would hit 16%. And that would be just five points behind the Conservatives on 21%. That is going to happen anyway. That, <laughs> the natural trajectory of reform is already going up. The Conservatives are going down. The likelihood is that the Conservatives are going to end up, before the next election, um, polling less than, the, than reform. But they will end up with seats and reform will end up with none. Uh, he said in GB News, what does it mean to be a conservative? The answer lies in reuniting the right. What we need is a big, open and comprehensive offer to those in reform. We had this in 2010 to the liberals who are hardly our soulmates. But most members of reform are not a million miles away from most conservative voters and members publicly. Well, yes, most members of reform are former members of the conservative party. Um, like Mr. Farage. But where he's got it wrong is in his initial question. What does it mean to be a conservative? Many people will tell you it means to lie. It means not to keep your promises. It means to attack those who are in a uh, poorer position than you are. It means to vilify the uh, asylum seeker. It means not to keep our word to international bodies. It means not to keep international treaties. It means to sneer at the stranger, to sneer at the people on the other side of the channel. This is what it means to be a conservative. It means to cheat. It means to put in excessive election uh, expense, uh, uh, um, expenses. It means to put in excessive expenses and at the same time to criticise uh, civil servants who have been appointed to look after what, as Esther McVeigh says, w uh, some sort of woke agenda. It means to divert and distract from the reality that the people in office are running out of ideas, are running out of honour, and are, are paddling around in very murky water. And the public thinks that any change must be better than keeping what is already there. Now, I'm afraid that change may be illusory, because many of the problems that are infecting the Conservative Party are equally infecting the Labour Party. Many of the problems are endemic, uh, have grown, have grown and have manifested themselves over the last 15 years 
because of the structure of the House of Commons. That structure possibly needs to be changed. And yet, again, distraction and uh, ideological um, self-promotion means the real change may take place in the House of Lords, which is the one bit of the parliamentary estate that is functioning relatively well. And yet, of course, it is challenging the House of Commons. It's likely that the death blow to the House of Lords will be struck by Rishi Sunak himself rather than by Sir Keir Starmer. That will be quite entertaining. Uh, in the same way, the Speaker of the House of Commons has been rendered almost useless by crisis after crisis. His voice is sounding almost apologetic week after week at Prime Minister's questions. What we need is a strong speaker. What we need are principled uh, members of Parliament who are elected uh, probably with far less with far less of an eye on the party whip. In fact, possibly we need to go all the way and look towards proportional representation and a broader coalition of a ruling party and, a, and the opposition benches. What we need to do is to break the 19th century form of politics, which has probably seen its day. But it's always interesting to hear from Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg languorously lecturing us about the lacunae of his um, nebulous uh, nonsense. But always interesting. Never that useful, but always interesting. <laughs>